When you really hear what the Lord is saying to you, it brings faith to your heart. Because you know, it's not just something that he said, it's something that he's saying to me. Well, that brings confidence to know, man, he's saying that to me right now. The Lord says, I not only want to restore what you've lost, I want to restore you. I want to restore your heart. I want to restore your confidence. I want to restore your joy, your peace. I want to make an example out of your life so that other people can say, that's what I want God to do in my life. One word from God can change your life forever. Well, hello, Jerry Dearman here. Welcome to Solid Life. Today, I've got a great message for you called God Speaks Through His Word. Did you know the Bible is not just a static book? that was written in ancient times, but it is a living word. It's something that when God wrote it, he knew who you were, what you'd be going through the day you read it. So it's as it were embedded messages in this book for you every single time you open it or every single time that you hear the word of God. So today I want to encourage you that as we go into this new year, that we need to receive what God is saying to us in real time through the Word of God. Open your heart to receive, and I'll be back at the conclusion to pray with you. Everybody together, John 14, 19 to 23, reading loudly and together, let's read. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Let's stop there. A very interesting passage that I think most people in the body of Christ would either not understand or just miss the power of. So Jesus is talking this night before he died, and he said this. He said, I have many things to say to you, and you can't bear all these things. We're going to get to that in just a minute. He said, whoever loves me and keeps my commandments, I love, and I'm going to come and reveal or manifest myself to him. He said, a little while longer, and the world won't see me anymore, but you'll see me. Now listen to this part. A little while and the world won't see me anymore, but you'll see me. A little while the world won't see me, but you'll see me. So Judas, not Judas Iscariot that betrayed him, but a different Judas, said, Lord, how is it that you're going to reveal yourself to us, but the world won't see you? How will we see you, but they won't see you? And Jesus answers something very peculiar. You would think he didn't answer the question, but he did. He said this, whoever loves me, he will keep my commandments, my word. And this is what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about this precious gift called the word of God. The written, holy, infallible word of God. There is no other book like this book. Don't think of this as just a holy book among others. There is no book on earth like this one. There is no book like this one. By the way, wherever there's something real and precious, there are going to be counterfeits to it. This is the book. This is the word of God. But here's what Jesus is beginning to teach them that night. That there is a new era that's coming when he's raised from the dead and he ascends to the Father where the Holy Spirit comes and there is something of a manifestation of Jesus to his people through the word of God, through the word of God. 
Now, you know they didn't understand all of that when he was saying it back then, and most people don't understand it today, but today you're going to understand it. I want you to walk away understanding what Jesus is talking about because Jesus is telling us, I want to manifest myself to you. I want to reveal myself to you. And so we're going to find out what he means by this. How is it that he's going to manifest himself to us and not to the world? In fact, he says this, whoever loves me, he'll keep my word and the father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him. In other words, it's not only Jesus, but Father God wants to show up too, and the world won't be able to see. So let's talk about this. First of all, in John 10, 27, you remember Jesus said this, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now, how do we follow the Lord? Somebody said, are you a follower of Jesus? Yes. How do you follow him? Well, what do you mean? Well, you said you're a follower of Jesus. How do you follow him? Uh, I go to church. Okay. Do you go to the church he goes to or what? <laughs> how do you follow Jesus? How do you follow Jesus? See, following Jesus is not just putting a fish on the back of your car or showing up at church periodically. Following Jesus is something literal, like, do you follow him? And if so, how do you follow him? Notice what he said here. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. How do they follow me? His voice. And when you really hear what the Lord is saying to you, it brings faith to your heart, because you know it's not just something that he said, it's something that he's saying to me. Boy, that brings confidence to know Man, he's saying that to me right now. Now listen to what Jesus said in John 16, 12. This is the same night, the night before he died. He said, I still have many things to say to you, talking to these disciples. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Now notice this. Jesus says to them, I have many things to say to you. I have many things I need to say to you, but you can't bear it now. Why? Man, well, here it is. The night before I die, I'm going to be arrested in just a little while. We got to get out to the Garden of Gethsemane because I need to pray to my Father. And, you know, I've told you about my death. I've told you about the resurrection. You're, you're trying to put all these pieces together. I've told you I'm leaving, and your heart is sorrow. And I've got a lot of other things that... I need to say to you, but you can't bear it all right now. However, I have a plan of how I'm going to speak these things to you. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Okay, so you're asking, so, but what, what about the things you have to say? He said, that's what I'm talking about. I have many things to say, but you can't bear them right now. However... When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Now, that's chapter 16. In the very next chapter, Jesus is praying to his Father, and in verse 17, he says, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. See, so when Jesus says, the spirit of truth or the Holy Spirit is going to come and guide you in the truth, he's saying, look, the Holy Spirit's going to guide you in the Word of God. Yes, truth in general, but specifically in the Word of God. Your Word is truth. Your Word is truth. I have many things to say to you, but you can't handle it all right now. However, the Holy Spirit's going to come, and He's going to guide you into all truth and share with you the things that I'm saying to you. And we could add, at just the right time when you need it, if, you're, if you have ears to hear. At just the right time. Now, how is that? This is what I'm telling you today. This book is not an ordinary book. This is not just a book of stuff God said a long time ago that has somewhat relevance for today. No, Hebrews 4.12 says, the word of God is living and active. 
These words are living, they're alive. The Christmas season is a time to be reminded that Jesus came so we could receive his love and his salvation and share that love with others. As we approach the beginning of a new year, Jerry Dearman would like to encourage you by giving you a special free audio series. It's titled, Seeing Your Word Come to Pass, which is designed to encourage you and show you how you can see not only God's promises come to pass in your life, but also how to discern what God has said to you for this coming new year. You can download this exciting series absolutely free by visiting jerrydearman.com or you can receive the six CD version of this groundbreaking series for your gift of $35 by calling 1-800-544-8000 or by visiting the online store at jerrydearman.com. And as you prepare for the new year, it's a perfect time to focus on God and to allow God to give you a fresh start for this new year. And we can't think of a better way to do that than with our OSL Online Discipleship System. This program is also free at jerrydearman.com. Just click on OSL Online. Thousands have already been changed by Operation Solid Lives because it fills you with the Word of God so you can develop a deeper relationship with God and more clearly discern what God is saying to you. Your life can be absolutely changed by the Word of God in the coming new year. Visit jerrydearman.com or call 1-800-544-8000 today to receive these life-changing resources. The Holy Spirit, now, he worked with every single author of the Bible to inspire them to write those words in just the right way. But think about this. Thousands of years later, in some cases, here you are, and you open your Bible, and you begin reading a certain passage. And Jesus said, the spirit of truth is going to guide you in that truth. The same one who inspired the person to write it is now sitting with you as you read it. Or you're sitting in church and you're hearing that passage. The same one. And you're going through a particular challenge in your life. You need instruction. You may not even realize how desperate you are for guidance. You're about to make a mistake. You're about to go the wrong way, and you don't know it. But here you are reading this passage. The same Holy Spirit that wants to convey what the shepherd Jesus is saying to you today because you're desperate to hear it, knew that the day he inspired that passage way back when. Let me say it this way. Whenever you're reading the Bible or hearing from the Word of God, hearing the teaching of the Word of God, the Holy Spirit could not have not known when he inspired that text that you were desperate to hear something. And so even though, yes, Moses is writing to the Israelites, Paul to the churches, Matthew to the Jewish people to bring the gospel, yes, they all have their general intentions. But when the Holy Spirit was authoring that, He's also thinking something that Paul's not thinking, that Matthew's not thinking, that Zephaniah would not have known. That you need something from Jesus on that particular day when you're reading it. And so while he's inspiring it, you may not find it in the nuances of the Greek text, but he is embedding messages from the Lord Jesus to you that when you finally become alive, and you're reading the Word of God, and you're going over that passage, it's in there. There's something that Jesus is saying to you, and the Holy Spirit knew it. That's why Peter said, look, you got to know it didn't come from us. The Holy Spirit wrote this through us, and therefore you can't just study what I meant or what the recipients needed to hear, but you have to know the Holy Spirit wrote this for all of us. And Jesus is talking to us. You can't bear it now, but when he, the spirit of truth, has come, who inspired this, he's going to guide you into it and help you to catch these embedded messages from Jesus himself that are going to come just at the right time. See, that's why when we read our Bibles and we have our little daily devotions, as we call them, we can't approach this as as if we're just going to gain a little more Bible knowledge today or get a nod from God and make him feel like, okay, I took time to read a little something. Are you okay now? That's not what it's about. 
He wants to talk to us. He wants to lead us. He has things to share. But while you're reading it, the Holy Spirit is saying, let me tell you how that applies to you. I'll give you an example of that. I remember when I was a teenager and, and I, my life was changed and, I, man, I'm excited about the Lord. I'm changed by the Word of God. In fact, I learned some of these things that I'm teaching you today about the power of the Word of God and the Holy Spirit revealing it to us and such. And, well, I was also praying about a wife, wanted to get on with my life and such, and uh, had my eye on a certain gal. And I'm just minding my business now. I'm reading the book of Proverbs in 24th chapter. It's probably the 24th day of the month. And I'm reading through, and I get to verse 27, and it just says, prepare your outside work and make it fit for yourself in the field, and afterward build your house. And so I just kept reading because that obviously didn't have anything to do with me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But as I started to go on reading, something inside just said, read that one again. And I thought, is that just me? But I thought, well, it won't hurt. I'll read it again. So I went back, read it again. Prepare your outside work. Make it fit for yourself in the field. And afterward, build your house. And I thought, okay, I'm not trying to build a house. So that must have just been me. And I just kept reading. But down inside, I heard, read that one again. And I went and read it again, and it said the same words, but this time, when it said the same words, it had a different meaning for me. And I'm going to share with you what the meaning was I heard. I didn't hear any different words, but I'm going to share with you what I heard the third time as I read it. Here's what I heard. Jerry, prepare your outside work. Outside the home, what I've called you to, your calling. See, I was in Bible college at the time. Prepare your outside work and make it fit for yourself. This is not the time to work on your marriage. This is not the time to work on your relationship. I'm trying to work on you. I'm trying to get you ready for something I've called you to do. And it's not time for you to be distracted with a relationship. I'm still working on you. You're not in shape for what I've called you to do yet. Prepare your outside work. Make it fit for yourself. See, what I want to do is I'll find a gal, we'll get married, and we'll get in the ministry together. He's saying, no, I want you to make it fit for yourself. Because I've got things i got to work on you. You get in, in, into a marriage, and now I'm having trouble getting you to focus on your part. What's your deal? Prepare your outside work. Make it fit for yourself in the field. And afterward, build your house. That word afterward just got big on the page. Afterward, afterward. There will come that time. Then you'll work on that. But right now, I need you to focus on what I've called you to do. That's not what I wanted to hear. The shepherd doesn't always tell you what you want to hear. That's not what I wanted to hear, but I knew I'd heard from God that day. The Lord's saying to me, I've got you right where I want you. Don't, don't follow your emotions. Now, see, I was so lonely. Whenever I hear somebody say they're lonely, man, my heart's tender toward that because I know what it's like to be lonely. You can be in a big crowd and be lonely. You can be in a marriage and be lonely, but you can also be alone and be lonely. And loneliness is a horrible feeling. And so often we make decisions to address the feelings and the emotions of our heart. And we don't follow the shepherd. We're following emotion. Because we think, well, God loves me. He wants my emotions to feel good. So, you know, I just start working to get these emotions taken care of. But what you don't realize is you're not following the shepherd. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. But what is the Lord saying to you? Well, I know he wants me to be happy, so he wants me to be in relationship, so I'm working on a relationship. Yeah, but what's he saying to you? You may have the cart before the horse. So you may get ahead of yourself and mess, mess up the plan. And I knew the Lord was saying to me, now's not the time, now's not the time. I need you to focus on you. And praise God, we went some time there, and we did, and uh, I finally got hired in the ministry in June of 1986 as the youth pastor of our church, not this church, but another church. And uh, July, I took the kids up to camp, and at camp I met this godly young woman <laughs> named Kimberly Diaz, and uh, we had our first date August the 1st. See, God, God wasn't late, but I had to work the plan. I had to follow the shepherd. You listening to me? Now, she didn't come the next month after the Lord gave me this scripture or the next year, but she wasn't late. See, God needed to work on me. God needed to work on me. See, this is what the Lord wants to do. 
Somebody said, are you saying that verse in the Bible just for you? It seemed like it to me. <laughs> but I'm sure the Lord's saying other things to other people through it. See, there's some principles in that that are for everybody in the body of Christ. But the Holy Spirit could not have not known that this young teenager needed some direction, needed a little nudge to say, don't, don't, go, don't go that way. Even if that gal you got your eye on is godly and everything, that's not what I'm saying to you right now. You need to stay focused. See, he could, have not, he could not have not known that when Solomon was writing these things and he was inspiring these things, that this teenager one day was going to need to hear a word from God to stay on track. Are you listening to me? Don't tell me these things are not in there. They're in there. And the Holy Spirit's right there when we're reading the word to say, well, I, I, don't go so fast there. Don't miss that. I'm saying something here. Jesus, the shepherd, is saying something right here. This is so precious, this book. You can't just do that with any book. The, the Holy Spirit inspired this one. See, so as we read this next year, we're not just going to read just to get a little devotion time done. We're coming to say, Jesus, you have many things to say to me, but I couldn't bear them all at once. But you sent the Holy Spirit now to guide me in the truth of the word of God so that I can begin to discern what you're saying to me today in real time. How many of you felt like you heard Jesus speak to you today? Raise your hand. Boy, that's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hey, let's all stand. Don't leave just yet. I'll let you out in just a minute, but let's all stand. And I want to lead you in something quickly. Just lift a hand to the Lord. Don't think of this as remedial or elementary or anything. Think of this as, as a pastor representing the chief pastor, the chief shepherd, and leading you to yield yourself to Jesus. So walk through this with me, but mean this in your heart as we pray. Say, Lord Jesus, we've looked at your word today. You have many things to say to me. And you sent the Holy Spirit to guide me in the truth, to guide me in the word of God, which he inspired so that I can hear what you're saying to me. So I open my heart. I yield myself to you. I give you permission to speak to me, to be my Lord, my guide, my instructor. I give you permission to correct me because you are God and you created me. And you bought me with a price. Help me to yield myself to you. Help me to discern your voice. I want to please you. I want to do whatever you want me to do. Well, that was a portion of the message. God speaks through his word. And right now, as we're preparing to turn the corner into the new year, this is the perfect time for us to sort of recalibrate, to reset, to realign our focus, to allow God to give us a fresh start for this new year. And let me share with you one huge, amazing way that so many people have received a reset from God. It's called discipleship. OSL Online is a tool, a free tool, mind you, that God has used with hundreds. And I mean, we're on track to have over 3,000 people a year graduate from one of these levels of OSL Online. What this does is it fills you with the Word of God and sensitizes you so that you can begin to discern what God is saying to you in real time. God is real and He wants to speak to you. And so, this new year, start the year off right. Give God four weeks. That doesn't mean you need to quit your job, but give God four weeks and fill yourself with the Word of God and let Him begin to take you up to a whole new level of living. If you go to jerrydermon.com, you'll click on the button that says OSL Online 
and it'll walk you through the whole process of how your life can be absolutely changed by the Word of God. Well, listen, don't forget to set your DVR so that you can have all of these programs available to you. And let me just wish you a happy new year and may the Lord take you up to a new level of glory in 2017. We'll see you next time. The Christmas season is a time to be reminded that Jesus came so we could receive his love and his salvation and share that love with others. As we approach the beginning of a new year, Jerry Dearman would like to encourage you by giving you a special free audio series. It's titled, Seeing Your Word Come to Pass, which is designed to encourage you and show you how you can see not only God's promises come to pass in your life, but also how to discern what God has said to you for this coming new year. You can download this exciting series absolutely free by visiting jerrydearman.com or you can receive the six CD version of this groundbreaking series for your gift of $35 by calling 1-800-544-8000 or by visiting the online store at jerrydearman.com. And as you prepare for the new year, it's a perfect time to focus on God and to allow God to give you a fresh start for this new year. And we can't think of a better way to do that than with our OSL Online Discipleship System. This program is also free at jerrydearman.com. Just click on OSL Online. Thousands have already been changed by Operation Solid Lives because it fills you with the Word of God so you can develop a deeper relationship with God and more clearly discern what God is saying to you. Your life can be absolutely changed by the Word of God in the coming new year. Visit jerrydearman.com or call 1-800-544-8000 today to receive these life-changing resources. Solid Life with Jerry Dearman is made possible by the generous gifts of those who have joined hands with us to take the message of Jesus Christ around the world. Jerry Dearman Ministries is building solid lives around the globe through the life-transforming power of the Word of God by discipling people in every nation. For more information about Jerry Dearman Ministries or one of The Rock's many campuses around the country, please go to jerrydearman.com. Write to us at P.O. Box 4970, Anaheim, California 92803 or call us at 1-800-544-8000.